Welcome back. This is the week you miss another crazy week. They have not been disappointing lately. We've been getting crazier and crazier. Uh, winter is here. It is December 1st. It's not really winter, but it's December 1st, 2022. Winter is 20 days away. It's definitely cold up in Philadelphia. Uh, at least, though, we don't have lockdowns like in China. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's what I'm talking about today. I guess, um, have you seen the videos? They look crazy. It looks like, uh, fortunately, honestly, it looks like the people in China are finally saying, fuck this. We're not cool with it. We're trying to have more freedom. And to me, that seems like that could, I would hope, roll over into more freedoms beyond COVID lockdowns and like, hey, maybe people in China shouldn't have a restricted internet or they should be able to, uh, whatever else, other restrictions they have, maybe those should be lifted as well, not just the COVID restrictions. So uh, mm -hmm. it sucks what's going on there. It's a lot of mayhem, but in my opinion, maybe this could be a little bit of a, a good thing in the long run and, and be what starts uh, a new time in China. Um, so I guess I have a couple questions for you. Uh, one, do you think these lockdowns are going to continue? Because I think they actually just today said they're going to start loosening them, probably because they realize they're not working too, too well or people are upset. But do you yeah. think that they're going to stay loose? Do you think they'll bring them back? What do you think that's going to look like? And then my other question is, do you think America will ever get lockdowns again? Do I think America will ever get lockdowns again? Yeah. Um, I don't think like lockdowns like we saw during the peak of the pandemic. I think I think the things we are likely to see here that are going to be sort of bullshit are schools going virtual and the return of mask mandates. Mm -hmm. um, I know, for instance, that in D.C., when kids came back from Thanksgiving break, they had to all submit COVID tests in order to come back. Um, I also do think that. And again, I mean, like I feel so dumb saying this, but it really has become like at this point. I, if you told if someone tells me who they vote for, I can almost exactly predict how they feel about COVID, which is so dumb because it's like, look, all you're going to see all this nonsense like up in Philadelphia, like you guys might have some school shutdowns if COVID numbers stop popping. You might have some virtual schooling down here in North Carolina. Not going to happen. It's not right. <laughs> like yeah, it'll, it'll not be more territorial happen. by like state or city. Yeah. But do you, you think states and cities uh, will have lockdowns? Um, no, I no, I don't look, I don't think there will be business closures. I think I think the most we'll see will be school closures or and not closures, but shifting to virtual school, which is basically not having school because everyone knows virtual school is largely a failure. Um, and I do think mask mandates. I do not think I don't think that people will allow businesses to be closed again. Um, what about banning like a hundred person events like they did or two hundred person yeah. events? Nah. Absolutely. I, I think at this point, if they tried to do that again, like there will be people filing lawsuits so fast that it'll make their fucking head spin. Um, and cause like, and this is not to go off on too much of a tangent, but you know, the fifth amendment, everyone thinks about it as the thing you say in Congress when you don't want to testify. But part of the fifth amendment is it basically also includes the illegal takings clause, which basically says that the government cannot deprive you of property, money, life, liberty, whatever, without due process. Um, and so this is something that, I'm shocked that we haven't already seen lawsuits on this, but to me, if I was a business owner and you shut down my business without compensating me for it, and then I go bankrupt, I should be suing you because you didn't give me due process. There was nothing. You, by the writ of an executive or even a bureaucrat within a government, was just like, you can't conduct business anymore. And no, we're not going to give you any money. And yes, you still have to pay rent. Yes, you still have to pay utilities. That's horseshit. Um, and I think a lot of these governments, one, I think you will start seeing lawsuits popping up as all this stuff starts to calm down. And if they do it again, I think it's just going to bring a ton of legal action at them. Um, but to to backtrack to your original point about the Chinese protests, I wish I could be as optimistic as you. But here's how I think this is going to play out. I think the Chinese government, you are right. They're already rolling back some other COVID restrictions. And I think they're strictly doing it to placate the population and try to reduce the intensity and size of the protests um but and then what they're I, gonna kill everyone yep they're, gonna, <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't be they're, surprised. they're not gonna kill them but what's gonna happen is because the thing is <laughs> at this point they they know the world is watching yeah and the thing is and it's something funny like cultures outside of the u.s and outside of like western europe they have a much like longer sense of time than us and scale than us yeah so like the Chinese will be like oh yeah like we know 
who 95% of these people were from cell phone pings, from surveillance cameras, from everything. We know exactly who they are. We know which ones were the worst offenders. We know which ones were the organizers. And we're going to do nothing for, I don't know, three, six, nine months. And then people will just start disappearing. Mm -hmm. They'll just start disappearing. It won't be all at once. They'll just start picking them off. Yeah. It'll just be like, where'd that person go? Be like, what do you mean that person? Yeah. That they're not a person. They're, or they'll replace they'll replace them with someone. Be like, what do you mean? He's right there. Just swap them in. <laughs> he, he never went anywhere. And that guy will be like, yeah. yeah, COVID is real. We need all the restrictions. And they'll be like, ah, all right. Yeah. So, <laughs> but yeah, no, I wish because the thing is, it's people have been comparing this Tian to the Tiananmen Square protests, and the comparison is not valid. People that are making that and like seriously don't understand the size and the scope of the Tiananmen Square protest. And the difference is- Well, because that, that's all censored, we can't look it up. <laughs> no, but I mean, we know for a fact that Tiananmen Square protest went on for, I believe, two months. Everyone thinks about it as just being what happened in the actual square, but like it was something that went on for months and months. Well, and, mm -hmm. uh, I'm sorry, continue, but then I have, I kind of want to pivot after you yeah. uh, say this. It went for months and months. It went for a couple of months, and then obviously they eventually cracked down, and the estimates are they killed about 10,000 people um, actually in the square using absolutely brutal techniques. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the other difference is that China didn't have the surveillance capabilities that they do now. Um, you know, the, the Tiananmen Square protests would have been crushed much more quickly if they happened now with everyone walking around with a tracking device that the government basically can control. Um, right. so, you know, it's, um, I, I like, I'm not optimistic. I think this is great to see. I love it when people push back against tyrannical governments. I like it in Iran too, but like, uh, boom, that's what I wanted to mention actually yeah. now is like, so, uh, Iran is how you're supposed to pronounce it. According to the journalists, uh, who are interviewing the, um, the American soccer players, but, um, in Iran, there's been protests for like a few months now. Uh, and it seems like those might get continually worse for a little bit are definitely not better um there's definitely some drama with the the soccer team uh not singing the national anthem at the world cup and then they got death threats to their family from the iran army and now they lost and they have to go home that's probably not yeah fun. they're not gonna have a fun time <laughs> yeah that's yeah, not gonna be a parade um nope. So I guess uh, my question would be like, what do you think about those protests? Do you think those might turn into the Iran Tiananmen Square and a new age of Iran? Or do you think that government will be um, pretty easily able to tame their people over time also? And it'll no, just I think be a it's little bit. I think it's going to be absolutely nothing. I don't think it's going to lead to anything. And I think, honestly, the more that I've been thinking about this, I think the the fact is that the technology that makes our lives day to day so much easier makes it so much easier for a government to oppress people, um, it makes it easier for them to track you, it makes it easier for them to completely shut down your life and make you basically an unperson living in a, a modern society. Um, well, I'm enjoying your optimism this morning. <laughs> look, man, sorry. Look, I, look, I hope I'm wrong. Yeah, yeah, I hope, hope so I'm wrong. Too. Damn, I'm trying so, to be a little positive about this. <laughs> well, look, look, because here's the thing, like, no one's going to invade Iran or Iran or how are you supposed to say it? It's not going to happen. Um, I really don't think so. But like, look, I think I think Iran is they're going to start executing these people. There have already been rumors that they might be doing mass execution of protesters in prison. And what are you going to do to them? They're already sanctioned. They already have people that don't care about the sanctions that are buying oil from them and supporting them. Like to some point, you know, there's just like besides literally just air dropping in like 500,000 like AK-47s with like 20 million rounds of ammunition. Like, I don't know how we help these people free themselves. I mean, aren't we doing that in uh, in Ukraine? Um, Why can't we do it two places? Um, it's an interesting question um, because that's that's actually it brings me to another question is um like whenever something happens in America uh, like the um, uh, Russian election meddling blah 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 whatever or this or that people go like oh there's Russian meddling or some people might say like oh it's China meddling with our social media trying to like make us think certain things, whatnot. So uh, it's interesting that a lot of people don't think the opposite when other countries are going through political turmoil. Hey, who do you think might be 
poking and instigating a little bit and planting some social media misinformation or information just to like uh, control a narrative though, the United States, in my opinion, I wouldn't be surprised. I don't know which way and I don't know what their aim is or their angle uh, would be, but I wouldn't be surprised if the US is in Iran uh, trying to kind of push things one way or another. I also oh, wouldn't be surprised yeah. if they're in China too. Uh, and like by in there, I don't know what that looks like. Maybe it's like they have a spy who is doing things or they just know this person is susceptible to manipulation, whatever. But I wouldn't be surprised if they're in these places kind of trying to promote some of these protests or maybe if their best interest is to quell the protest, maybe they're trying to quell it too. I don't know. Um, but do you think that that is definitely the case? Oh, yeah. No, the, the biggest thing that to me after the the whole like Russian meddling thing, which is pretty much nonsense and is very overblown in many ways, because the thing is, it's like all major governments do this in all countries that they have a political interest in. They all meddle like we have. I mean, we flat out like it's not that we meddled like we didn't buy Facebook ads in a country. We literally deposed like democratically elected people and helped install dictators. That is not a conspiracy theory. That is a fact that has yeah. happened. We've like, done that like like dozens of yes, and dozens like, of, a lot. Yeah, and known, so, and then we've probably done it a few times unknown, like even of more course. malicious. Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> and so, and, and the thing with with the Iran versus China question, like, yes, we definitely have intelligence assets in Iran that are probably helping foment this or helping to do things. Um, and I think that's good or bad. I'm not really sure. Like, I'm. I'm more and more, I'm coming to the belief that we should just be like, you know what, F you, we're not going to be involved, we're not going to care about your shitty country, like, go do whatever you want, like, it's, it's on you, because I just, I think it's, it's wasting blood and treasure on, in some ways, things that are lost causes, um, and I, I know that sounds sort of brutal, but at this time, like, I'm just not, I don't know, I don't see it, but the thing with China, I think the the issue with China is like we've known that Iran was Iran was the enemy. I'm using air quotes here um, since the revolution and the hostage situation, all that. And that happened in what I think like the the late 70s mm -hmm. into like 80, I believe. So they've been on our radar as someone that is sort of a foe um, for a solid 40 years at this point. With China, I feel like their dominance sort of snuck up on everyone because, and I just feel like. My assumption would be is it's harder to get people in high places within the Chinese government because it is such a closed society in many ways. And they, the party has such a tight grip over the country, the Communist Party. So mm -hmm. I don't know. But yeah, I mean, we, look, we we have spies and digital spying and everything on every country in the world and certainly probably more concentrated in China, Russia, um, Iran, Venezuela, you know, the places where that are that are sort of our enemies again using <laughs> giant air quotes mm -hmm. um so i think that you know it's important to just i like i don't know i just don't necessarily see the point of this but i hope look i hope these people can rise up i hope they continue to and like maybe what happens in china is there's another tiananmen square but this time because of cell phones some video leaks out of them literally like machine gunning down crowds of thousands of people because you know i think at this point like them beating people up or throwing people in jail like no one is surprised by that anymore that's just considered mm -hmm. the standard operating procedure like we need to see something truly atrocious like we would need to see video of iran hanging like five thousand people all at once in a public stadium to like even move the needle at this point like and even at that point i'm not sure like uh how much we would do anymore because each time we do something i think our people are getting more and more upset because our country is going down the gutter and like we need to focus some resources on us, uh, you'd think. But let's um wrap that up. I want to hear what you have to say. I only have about 10 more minutes, unfortunately. So let's um hear what you got for us so, this week. You know, to, to follow up on uh, when we were talking about uh, FTX, bro. So I am so confused and I am really have you seen he's been doing like interviews like, I, li I literally just watched an interview with him on Good Morning America. And Wait, the Sorkin one last night? No, not that one. There was another one this morning with George Stephanopoulos. No way. Yes. And, like, what? I don't, like, why is this motherfucker not in handcuffs? Why is, like, I, like, if, if this kid just skates 
with no legal consequences, he's definitely connected. Call me a conspiracy theorist. He's being protected by someone. If this kid ends up with a slap on the wrist or getting no charges at all, something is corrupt here. I don't know what, I'm not going to make any guesses, but like something is going on. I mean, duh. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I, um, I'm in the same boat. I, uh, I'm hoping he eventually gets in trouble. It makes no sense that he hasn't. And, um, I hate to say it, um, not trying to like, uh, implicate myself too much, but I break rules sometimes because of what I see on TV of you get rewarded, the bigger the rule you break. It's like, yeah. it's not, it's, it's completely pointless to rob the deli across the street for me. I'll get maybe a hundred dollars and I'd probably end up like going to jail for six months a year because it's like physical, I'm there, whatever. But if I do wire fraud or bank fraud and I try and steal $500 million or a billion dollars, it's a slap on the wrist. It's like a fine. Sometimes it's not even jail time or if it is jail time, it's like a, a few months or at like a luxury camp. It makes yeah. no sense. And it just, um, it, it sets a horrible precedent and a horrible example. I was very happy that Elizabeth Holmes got put away for 11 years yeah. uh, and and probably should have gotten more. But yeah. that was good because she fraud. And like that was interesting to me, too, is she got in trouble for frauding investors, not for like playing with people's medical lives. lives. <laughs> yes. Yeah, like. Yeah. Uh, and that's like so twisted that these people are only getting in trouble for little uh, money things, but not for like the actual bad that they're doing of lying and manipulating and stealing and frauding and all of that. So it's bizarre to me. I think there's still a chance he does get in trouble. They're just like building the case or taking their time with it. But I don't know why they're taking their time if they are. It's like he should be gone already and hold him in uh, hold him in a cell until court because he definitely is a flea uh, a flea um, case or whatever. Yeah. And uh, and yeah, just hold them. It makes no sense. But again, to your pure initial point, uh, it's so dumb that he's doing interviews like. Oh, yeah. And his lawyer, I believe, told him, don't do it. Reeking he, out. Yes. His lawyer is not happy. It's like, dude, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. I don't understand what he thinks. Like, is does he think he's going to clear his conscience? I don't know. It's it's insane. And, you know, it's interesting because you bring up the fact and your example is right about robbing the deli versus robbing hundreds of millions of dollars. I believe it was a Stalin quote. He said, you know, five deaths is a tragedy. A million deaths is is a statistic. And it's exactly. like it's, it's sort of the same thing. It's like the scale of the crime oftentimes makes it impossible to sort of wrap your head around, like how bad it actually is. Because mm -hmm. it, it's just and I don't know. And also, I think part of it is, <laughs> I do think part of the reason that maybe this isn't getting the same response as like Madoff is because crypto is seen as this weird thing. And there's obviously, and you know this, there's a lot of like, oh, these dumb crypto bros. And it's just a bunch of like white, you know, bros who go out and get a monkey NTF or whatever. Like, I just don't think, like people don't view this in the same way as the Birdie Madoff, where it was like, my entire life savings was invested in this, you know, the stock market, which is something that everyone understands and knows about. And many people are invested through their 401ks versus this, where it's like, well, these people were gambling essentially anyways. So fuck them. Like, you know, you're not, you don't arrest a casino manager if someone goes in and loses a million dollars and they end up bankrupt. Like that's, they knew what they were getting into. And so I think that's also a contributing factor to this as well, is that people view this as like, look, you guys played with fire and you got burned. What do you want us to do about it? Yeah. I also think um, like, uh, how am I going to wrap this in? You, there's like seven mass shootings this week and you kind of don't hear about them all because we're just so used to it because they happen all the time. I kind of feel a little similar about this is like, oh, someone stole $10 million. Like that happens every day for the last 20 years. We're used to the fraud. Um, and maybe that's a little bit of it. It's like, it's not that surprising that someone stole more money. It is the biggest, <laughs> the biggest example of stealing and the political connections and all of that definitely make it a little bit wilder. But um, we're used to people stealing money. It happens literally all well, the time. It's actually interesting. I think the shooting issue is almost inverse to what we just were talking about with the way people react to like financial crimes. Because if there was if there was five individual people killed and shot in North Philadelphia 
hours apart, unrelated, five separate shooters, five separate victims. But then there were three people shot, shot by one person in a target all at the same time. What story is going to get covered? What story is going to make national news? It, it, you know. No, exactly. The three in a target. That the three in a that, target. No, that literally happened. Um, I think at least twice in Philly. Like um, the shooting on South Street. That was like uh two people, uh, fighting each other and then shooting at each other, and it ended up the crossfire like um hit people in the crowd or whatever. That made national news that same night or that same day. There's like six murders in Philly. And no one knew. And it's like, oh, because there's one shooting in public with people running, of course, that's going to make the news. But like, no, Philly has that many murders like every day. Yeah. Um, they're just not all one person. And we're like immune to it. It makes no sense to me. But, yeah, no, it absolutely it absolutely makes no sense. And it, it's crazy. But uh, but yeah, so sort of a depressing episode today. But <laughs> Yeah, so I'll, I'll um, leave us on a, a little. I'm going to try and be good note, although yesterday was a little good, a little bad. So yesterday, got a property um, in New Jersey. I closed. Hey, congrats. So got six acres. Anyone who wants to come camp whenever, come camp. It'll be awesome. But uh, it was like an hour and a half of um, an issue at close because they, um, dude, they left all of their trash in the uh, from the home just on the lawn. So like, <laughs> it's like dude. Uh, That's fun. I was like, yo, it would have been better if you just left it in the house. Like, uh, what do you guys <laughs> want me to do so i was i asked for money they said they're not budging i was like then like we're not having the settlement then like you, uh you have to give me something it ended up like an hour and a half of just nonsense we finally negotiated came to this uh deal so i'm like cool i got the house um i'm excited i'm planning to go back that night to like drop some stuff off and all that i'm driving home about to cross the Ben Franklin Bridge, and I skid on the um, on the rain and uh, totaled my car. So oh my you got in a crash on a bridge? That's like terrifying. no, right, right before the bridge. Thank God. Oh, yeah, if it, was, God. if it was on the bridge. Oh my God. No. Oh. I mean, I was I was terrified as it is. Somehow, I literally didn't feel a bump, like not a thing. I came out completely unscratched and scathed. The other car had a woman like screaming uh, until the ambulance came, which was definitely not the not most good. not fun. I think she broke a bone. Um, oh. So it was oh. like this painful. It doesn't look like she has like a, an injury that's going to affect her for a long time or anything, but sure. um, definitely suck. But that's what we'll close out on. I hope next week is better because I'm getting a little tired. This is exhausting, but we're making it. Keep pushing. We got this. Later. Later. <laughs>